Hey friends, as promised today on the Creative Shop Talk podcast, we are going to be talking about how to invite and how to make sure people show up to our amazing events. So stay tuned. We have a lot to talk about today. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Okay, so when we're marketing and promoting any event or anything in our shop, we have to do it with intention. We just don't have time to waste and we don't want to waste the opportunity We're going to be putting a lot of time and money and energy and everything into this event. And then we want to make sure people show up for it. And it's not one of those ho-hum events. We want to make sure people have a great time. We want to make sure they show up. We want to make sure that we reach those goals that we talked about in episode uh, number 143 when I shared on how to plan out your event. So what I want to share with you today are marketing strategies and tips ideas that you can put in place. But I want to encourage you not to think about doing all of these. There are some big picture and some sort of high level questions you want to answer and then pick your own path. (laughs) Choose your own adventure today on how you want to promote and market. But I do want you to think about how are we reaching new customers? How are we getting new customers to come to this event that we've planned out so beautifully? How are we nurturing in in our existing customers and inviting our loyal customers back into these events. Those are the questions we want to make sure that we answer. And I'm going to share some free ideas for marketing because I think the first road that we always take is it's only social media that's free. Otherwise, we have to pay. And I'm going to I'm going to bash those ideas for you today. (laughs) We're going to jump into some other ideas. First of all, we want to reverse engineer our goals for events, right? And when I say events, I'm talking about, um, if you haven't listened to episode 143, I'm talking, these are talking about promotional events, events for awareness or events for sales, whatever we are doing. And I'd love for you to go back and listen to that podcast so you can understand where I'm coming from when I talk about, you know, reverse engineering and having an objective to our purpose for the event. We don't want to just have random acts of events and random acts of marketing. I am here. I'm on a mission this year to stop with the random act of marketing. We are going to make sure that what we do is we do it with intention. So we want to make sure that if we are going through the energy and the time to create and plan and organize events with a purpose, that people show up and they come in the door and they come and buy, that they know about it. And what I see regularly, and this is, you know, this is what I see regularly. This is what I used to do is we put these events on Facebook events and then we say, that's it, call it a day. We might put up some graphics or a few things and we don't really promote events to our fullest capability. And then my problem always was time. And I'm sure yours was, is, (laughs) was can be and what to do and how to do it so I wanted to break down some thoughts around that for you today and I want you to think about again as I mentioned at the the top of the show attracting new customers we really have to put our CEO hat on and start thinking about how are we getting new people to come into this event and also again how are we nurturing our existing clients So let's, let's talk about some simple things. So creating your social media, of course, we're going to do that. Of course, we're going to be doing, first of all, we want to start everything early, as early as possible. So again, maybe it's six to eight weeks out and we can start with just engaging and nurturing our existing clients by having posts 
you know, even as depending on your event and what you're doing, everybody's doing different events. If it's a big giant event or if it's a product launch, we want to tease our clients. We want to incur like we want to give them sneak peeks. You know, we want to maybe say something's coming, you know, whatever it is. Maybe you're having a team meeting and you're all sitting around the table planning out an event share that on social media. Maybe you're doing some graphics uh, in advance for it and you want to show like a little sneak peek of your corner of your Canva. What can you do that will entice your clients, existing clients to say, Ooh, that, what, what's happening? What's going on? What's happening? Those things ha- are really important with social media, planning as far out as we can, the sneak peeks, the building up things. And even if you're only a week out, even if you're two weeks out, doesn't matter. You can build up things with, you know, building up emotion. People People come to events most of the time, you know, they will come for your sales if you have sales or product launches, as we spoke about in episode 143, but they, but they're coming with emotion and they're coming like people buy with emotion. Why would we not want to share all of these product launches and events that we're planning based on emotion? So how can we get them excited about it? And we also want to make sure, um, while we're doing all of this, that we're not just creating that social, that Facebook event and leaving it one and done is what I call that. And I see it again, so many times I I want to reiterate, well, it's on Facebook events. That's what I hear from clients. And that's not enough. You can create a Facebook event if you want, but really they're irrelevant. Honestly, Um, you can create them if your clients are used to going to see where your events are, but you do want to make sure that you're promoting them in so many different ways. So let's talk about them. So in-store signage, um, again, this is going to help your existing clients, not going to get you new clients, but it's going to help your existing clients. So we want to have signs everywhere, you know, behind your cash or making sure we're having bag stuffers or brochures. We're going to start this as early as possible, depending on your event, of course, We want to make sure that we're talking about it in our regular email. We could have a banner on the bottom. Don't forget we have, you know, our upcoming holiday blast or our product launch or whatever it is, you know, our exciting event that we're doing. Whatever that is, we want to make sure that we are promoting that as often as possible in our weekly newsletter to our clients. We could do press releases, again, depending on your event if it's a charity event or if it's anything that's community minded and that's going to be for your new customers, right? We're going to attract new people thinking about using a press release. Maybe it's in a regional magazine or an online local community flyer or something that goes out. Think outside the box. Think about different things and don't think your event is too small. I'm going to say that again. Don't think that you and your business and your event is too small. Your community, if you are a community and a local, a local community and a business, you are important to the community. We're so much more important than you think you are. Like you're, you're so much more important to your town. And I I feel like sometimes we forget about that. So send out those press releases. That might be, uh, you know, a really big win for you. Don't forget tourism sites, tourism in your area what to do, you know, and again, depending on your event, but if you're doing free demos or you're doing whatever it is that this event is, we want to remember that we want to invite what to do in your town. (laughs) Think about your town. You must have a community, tourism, local, there's all, all the towns have uh, boards and communities. Even TripAdvisor has a spot now where you can put on your events as well too. So think about where can you promote? This is the question and we're going to be brainstorming through all of these things. What I'd love for you to do is think about what can I do? These are the questions that we're going to start with. What can I do? So what can you do for in-store signage? What can we do? And then we're going to kind of narrow it down to what will we do, right? But these are all ideas I hope you're finding helpful. So the other place that we want to nurture our clients is through our loyalty programs. A lot of people forget about loyalty programs. So if you have a loyalty program, and I hope you do, or I hope you have some kind of loyalty program, you can do extra incentives to invite them to come to this event. So we can have maybe early openings, like you could open an hour early just for your loyalty members. You could give them an extra ballot via their emails, like you could send them an email if you're doing door prizes. Maybe you have a special door prize just for loyalty members that come to this event. So you, you know, give them a ballot and then there's a special basket or giveaway or whatever you have at your uh, at your shop that people see and then they it encourages more people 
at the event to sign up for your loyalty program as well. That's kind of a win-win most of the time. And again, social media, you put your Instagram and all of that, you know, that's, that's another avenue, but it's not the only avenue, as I mentioned earlier on. So we want to make sure that we are doing consistent you want to be almost sick of talking about your event. <laughs> so keep talking about it. We all know with the algorithms that people don't see our events. They don't see us. So talk about it, share, sneak peek. I want you to lead up to the event. I mean, the prep for the event, go, you know, if you're prepping in your back room and you've got all the supplies back there, if you're wrapping the raffle, if you're sending out your email to your loyalty clients, uh, take a sneak peek of of. The, the, of the email and say, I'm just sending it out, you know, don't miss it if you're a loyalty member or, and then of course that works several ways, but make sure that you're updating your headers or any banners or any place that you need to, if it's a, you know, if it's a big event, especially like I'm thinking launches or holiday events or anything like that, we want to make sure that everybody knows we're doing it. So when I land on your social media, here's a, here's a, a test for you, a litmus test for you. If I land on your social media and I don't know anything about your event, I'm new. I'm just finding you. I just heard about you because I read a press release <laughs> about your event and I find your social media and I land on your page. Will I be able to tell that there's an event coming up? Sometimes we can't. Well, I talked about it two weeks ago. That's what I hear quite often. That's what I see quite often. So we want to make sure that, you know, you have, again, you're promoting it as much as you can with your updated header or have a pinned post at the top, or you just talk about it so much that, you know, as long as I don't have to scroll too far on social media, or it's on the squares in your Instagram, you know, the nine squares everybody sees, is there, you know, at some point in time in there, if you're just sharing it on stories and Instagram, you are leaving opportunities on the table, you want to make sure that we have uh, a post as well, or a reel that's very clear with a cover photo about your event. And this is all pre event, right? We not like I see a lot of people post this after events, but we want to make sure we're doing it pre event. We also want to do it after events so that people want to come to our next one. But we do want to make sure that we're not forgetting to have actual posts on, you know, Instagram or however you're communicating regularly with your clients. So think about that. Another place that we can share, is, there is apps and community, you know, I know I mentioned community like bulletin boards, but think about app events, you know, Eventbrite works in some instances, again, depending on your situation. And again, this will attract new customers. So the Nextdoor app, for example, or again, local community bulletin boards, what do your people use? What's an app that your people are on and or that people come in and find you for? It's different all over the world. I know we have listeners all over the world. It is different. But what are some apps that you use to find local events going on in your community? Gets your butt on that event. <laughs> That's what we want to do, right? So we do need to also think about our existing clients. And this is kind of a funny thing that we forget. I do. I forget about it. And we want to make sure we're asking our existing clients, asking our customers to bring a friend or share. Could you share, you know, could you share this event? And again, depending on your event or what you're doing, if it's a big community event, we want to make sure we're asking our existing clients. That is your existing clients are some of your best. They are your best way of finding new clients, of attracting new clients, of being, you know, having people become aware of you by using your existing clients. So don't forget to ask your clients and you can do that via email. You can do it by via your social media. You can do a Facebook live and just say, Hey, if you have any friends that would love this, you know, love to come and join us, bring them along or tell them about our event. We're so excited. It's always, you know, exciting when, when you're excited, they'll get excited and they'll get excited to share that you're excited <laughs> about your event. So don't forget that. Invite local shops. So literally, depending on your event and what you're doing and all of the things, uh, look look to local events. Go, go to the coffee shop next door. Go across the street to other shops. Go down the road to all the other shops. Have, you know, if you have your brochures or your, you know, your bag stuffers or postcards or something about your event, make sure, you know, bring those over. Ask them retailer retailers we have a tendency and I know I speak about this a lot but we have a tendency to, to think that people will automatically do that or they'll automatically know about our event 
or they'll automatically say no, <laughs> but we don't know if we don't ask, right? The answer is always no if we don't ask. So bring a little handful of, you know, your flyers or your brochures, or even just bring one and ask them if they will come and join you at your event or if they'll share with their clients, depending on it. Go to the hairdressers, go, go all around and ask. Don't make assumptions, even if you haven't received, you know, positive in the past, just, just keep asking, just keep going. Don't forget local, you know, if it's relevant, don't forget like local associations, who, who would think it's cool what you're doing who who would find it interesting so don't be afraid to invite local shops so that is another thing that you could do and put on your brainstorming we also have of course paid marketing we could do so all of those were free by the way everything I just shared was all they're all free and on that free note also remind yourself who do you know like who do we know in the community who do you know in the neighborhood isn't that <laughs> a song anyhow um I digress as I do sometimes. Sorry, guys. But you know, who do you know? Who do we know that would be interested or could share about our event? So that's something to think about. So under paid advertising, and again, we could have a whole podcast and I guess we should probably soon understanding when to pay for ads and how to know if you know, if it's relevant or not. But the big picture on that is to understand your goals. Um, I guess the big the big, the big picture, I guess that well, the big goal of this is to understand your goal of the customers you hope to come in through this ad, the new customers, hopefully it's usually new customers we want to attract, right? Or maybe remind our existing clients who haven't been in in a while, but we want to know our average order value and how many people we expect to come in and that will help us set a budget. So marketing is a whole, or paid marketing is a whole a whole difficult sometimes it feels difficult or heavy but really if you think about the numbers and how many people you hope to attract and think about your average order value and I mean hope to hope to attract new customers and do some guesstimates make some make some assumptions and make some guesses and figure out your average order value and what your goals are for the event if it is a you know if it's just awareness then we're just going to make sure that we're making smart decisions with our CEO hat on before we jump into throwing a lot of money at an ad without intention. But if we have intention, which is what we're doing here, uh, your ad and you know what you're, you know, you have lots of lead time and you're, you're making an intentional ad purchase, then it's worth it. Okay. So on that note, that was a side note on when to pay for ads, right? But really you have in thinking about your lifetime value of your clients and all of that. So it can be lots of numbers, but but think about your intention about it. Don't just throw money at paid ads. But things that do work really well for different people, think about your clientele. I really want you to think about who your ideal customer is. It could be a radio ad or it could be direct mail. Direct mail is working really well right now. So old fashioned direct mail. You know, we could do, you know, and paid magazine ads and all of those things. So really think about where you're going to invest your money. And again, Facebook ads or Instagram or Google ads as well. But being really intentional and thinking this out in advance and not doing it sort of at the last minute, that's where you'll see some great success with ads. Okay, so we're leading up to the ads. We're planning this out. We're going to start brainstorming. And I, again, I want you to brainstorm. These are things we could do. And then sit down with your team or your people and figure it out or sit down on your CEO date and start thinking about the things we could do. And we are actually going to, I'm going to suggest now you're going to make a decision on what are we going to do? Because that's, that's you know, that's the key. We can't do it all. And there is a lot here. It does sounds like a lot of, of work and it does, and it can be if it's done by winging it, but we're not winging it anymore, right? We're being intentional about our work and we're being intentional about our marketing. So then we're just executing. So we're brainstorming, we're deciding what we're going to do, and then we just have to execute and do these things. And it takes a lot of pressure off from no more winging it. That's, that's our, that's our motto for 2023, right? No more winging it. So I do want to add another aspect of marketing, and it's one that's often overlooked. And I'm going to share some examples that have worked beautifully for many of my clients. And that is making sure that we don't stop the marketing, be, like just to the day of event of whatever the event is. At the event or during the day, the day of event is a prime, like super prime time 
to advertise and to promote your your event and I can hear you now through the I can hear you now through the through the podcast waves that you know we don't have time during an event but this is why we're talking about it now we're going to be super intentional about it now so you can plan and it might mean having somebody help you it might mean whatever it will mean for you but I want you to think about on the day of event a couple of things that you can do um, that will elevate your outcome of people arriving. So first of all, think about your your ideal client. Not everybody plans ahead. A lot of people like to kind of, you know, take their, let's see what I'm doing on Saturday and maybe I'll go to that event or maybe I won't. And then they forget about us. But we don't want them to forget about us. So we want the awareness of the event sort of with everything else we've just done. We want the awareness of the event that we all the work we've done to build up the event and to let people know about it and and to be on top of mind for everything but on the day of the event we want to draw them in we want to make sure they come in so whether it's a weekend event or whatever it is I want you to really think about the things that we can do during the event or during the weekend and um, one thing this is kind of you know I I think it's like a no-brainer but we also get tied up in the busy during an event And that is to show the crowd, show the people that are there. I'm sure you have seen, either you've done it or you've seen other people, show the lineup around the corner, show the, show the crowd, like show the people, like the frenzy and the fun and all of the exciting things that are happening during your event. It's gold because people want what other people have, right? If everybody else is having fun, I want to get there too. I want to have some fun with you at this shop. And again, remember, people are looking for experiences. And, you know, if that's what your event's all about, and, you know, if that's what we want, we want to encourage that emotion. And if that's part of your goals, we want to share what's going on. So if it is, you know, a free demo you're doing, if it's demo Saturday and you're, you know, that's your event. I feel like I'm, you know, maybe you think there's a lot of this thing here. We're probably not going to do paid ads and all of that for an event, but showing, having one of your, your employees take a picture if you're doing, or whoever's doing the event and have somebody else going live and saying, you know, Wendy's doing an event right now. And, oh, we have such a great crowd or Wendy's going to go live in a few minutes. Those things are gold and they drive people into your shop. So, and even if you can't make it, you know, we kind of let people know they can still come and see what's happening and those kinds of things. And also like pictures, live events during, again, it's not too late, letting people know it's not too late, encouraging them, even just photos, even just a photo, snap a photo and post it up, like plan on your your social media. Also having an email scheduled to go out on the day of event work really well. Now, if you're super keen, you can add, you can add a photo. If you can do it really quick, maybe have it templated out, you know, if, and I say super keen because, you know, that does take a little bit more work, but you could have your email ready to go, take a picture of the crowd, put it into your email, you know, a planned picture and send out that email and say, we're open and, you know, we're open all weekend or we're open till six tonight or whatever that is. And we're having so much fun. We want to make sure you come and join us too. So it's an invite, right? It's invites is what we want to do. So people, again, a reminder, people want what other people have. Like they want to be part of things. So don't forget the emails. I'm thinking of one of my clients, um, Ali from the, the Lemonade Stand. She has a holiday event every year. And like customers are so excited and they have so much fun, like before the doors open and the lineup around the corner and she has Santa Claus and all the things. And I've I, I, probably shared it before because it's so it's so fun and it's such a thing you know it's such a big event and people wait uh, you know so she's out with her camera and they're going they go live on Facebook and Instagram and they share this and it just builds right it builds for the day the momentum for the day and then she shares all day they have you know she has a dedicated person who's sharing in on her Instagram all day all the fun things that are going and don't miss out don't miss out on our you know whatever deals or we have this launch or whatever you're doing so don't underestimate that. Also have unscalable conversations during the event. This is super important. So if you left or you're doing something, (laughs) pay attention to this. Have unscalable conversations at the event, during the event. And what I mean by unscalable conversations, it's a really, a really important marketing tool for you. We did a whole episode on that. We'll have that in the show notes as well too. But it's a chance to have an intimate conversation with your client and you will hear all the reasons why they came and what they love. And they they won't tell you what they don't love, probably. 
but they will they will tell you why they are there and i'm think back to like one of my clients michelle she has a lot of events and she has that nailed and we had michelle on the podcast talking about her events and you know in a nutshell she found out that people were not coming for sales and she felt sort of obligated to have like a sales table or a featured item people were not coming to her events for that that those the sale tables hardly or the sale items hardly moved at all but her 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 average orders were amazing which was her goals for her her events but she you know she they came for the experience they came to see new product lines they came because they wanted something fun to do with other like-minded people they were there for the experience and they shopped like she knows her clients so think about having those conversations and making sure that you're distilling and you're pulling out you know and asking questions again with intention we're doing it with intention right we're making a point to have questions we're making a point to be intentional about asking our clients and having those intimate conversations and that is gold for your marketing that is super gold like and it's something a lot of us maybe forget to do with our clients so we also want to make sure that during the event or whatever that we're we're making instagrammable moments i'm trying to think of what to call those but we want we want to make memorable moments for our clients and we want to make sure we're inviting them to share so maybe it's a contest maybe there's something that we're asking them to do to invite their friends so if it's a weekend long or a couple day long or even just a one day event so you know friends of your customers will see that and they'll be like "Ooh, Susie's having a lot of fun over there at this place I need to go too so we're asking them to share and then we are reposting this takes a little bit of intentionality again having somebody on your team checking Instagram every now and then or Facebook or whatever and sharing. So what and what I mean by that, and maybe it's a contest, maybe you're saying, you know, we're going to everybody that shares a picture from this corner or shares a product they're buying or shares part of, you know, from this demo or whatever it is that we're doing at these events. We want to make sure that we're letting them, you know, we're they're tagging us and whatever. We're making it really Instagram. Maybe it's a contest so that they'll get a chance to win. We're going to pull from everybody that shares today. I'm thinking about like the lure of that. It makes people want to come to your event, right? So I'm thinking of like Jeff. He had a Derby Day, um, a Derby Day event. Uh, Jeff's in Mont Holly from uh, the Vintage Nest and one of uh, one of our clients. Jeff's been on the podcast as well here. And I'm thinking about, you know, when he was sharing his Derby Day, like they were having so much fun in the shop and customers were sharing pictures and then they were resharing them. And like, I wanted to be there. I live a long ways from (laughs) Jeff, but I was like enjoying it. Um, Millie did that with uh, from Mrs. Blackwell's bookshop. She did that as well, too, during their book hop weekend. And all the bookshops were all sharing, you know, tagging people. And it's like, I wanted to be part of that. I want it to be part of that. So I want you to think about how you can make people be part of it during the event. So making those Instagrammable moments or asking people to share somehow doing all of that. So I know this is a lot. I feel like I'm, I'm giving you a lot to do, but I want you to distill this down into a couple of questions. So we're going to lead up to the event. As we're leading up to the event, I want you to figure out a timeline and your purpose and always sticking to the purpose of your event and the reason for your event and sticking to your budget. I'm going to say it again, (laughs) putting your CEO hat on and sticking to your budget. But I do want you to answer some questions as you're pulling this through. So as we're promoting and marketing our event, some of the questions you can ask yourself or bring to your team are, what are we doing to attract new customers to this event. This is brand new, spanking new people, (laughs) people who do not know how are we bringing awareness of our brand, of our store, of our event to new people. And so what could we do? And that you'll brainstorm a bunch of ideas. Some of these I shared with you today. Um, Hopefully it sparked some ideas of your own. And then what will we do? And that's the, that's the answer. That's the, that's the golden ticket. What will we do? The other question is, what are we doing to invite our existing customers or hyping up our existing, or what could we do to hype up and get everybody excited that already know, love and trust us? What are we doing to invite them to this event and get them hyped up? What could we do? And then what will we do? What are we going to do? And then we're going to put that on that sheet, right? So the next question on that is, during the event, what could we do? What could we realistically do? And then what will we do to build excitement and hype 
on the day of event, on the day of the event or the weekend of the event or whatever. So those are the three sort of big marketing questions when it comes to marketing and promoting. And, you know, you take a chunk of all of these and you take some ideas hopefully away today and you implement with intention. If we do it with intention, you'll see, you know, all of the chances of of filling, you know, of it being a successful event, of filling the shop and seeing the goals that you set achieved for that event. I've had clients in the past say to me, well, my event was kind of a flop and not many people came out or, you know, I don't know, it went okay. And when I start asking them or we start digging into promotion and marketing and I realize that they just, they kind of, well, they put a Facebook event up. Well, I was too tired or I was trying to wing it. Yeah, I know we should have. Don't make excuses, do it with intention, like be intentional about marketing because you, again, and as I said at the very, very beginning, when we're marketing and promoting any of our events or anything at all, we need to not waste our time. We just don't have time to waste, right? And we don't want to miss any opportunities. We don't want to miss any opportunities to let the world know about our awesome event that we've taken time to plan. So if you're going to spend time and you're going to spend money, You know, we want to make sure that we get the outcome that we want from these events. So go forth and have an awesome kick butt event. I hope you found this helpful today or useful or valuable. And let me know, follow, go jump onto Instagram or, you know, reach out anytime. I'm at Wendy Batten Biz on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. We always have a post up about the podcast. So DM, jump in my DMs. Let me know if you found this helpful or share your helpful tips with me because there's so many ways to promote and market your event. So thank you, my friend, for listening. Don't forget to leave a review if you have the time to do that. I would be so appreciative. That is like podcast currency, as we call it, because that's the only way the podcast gets found by other other awesome retailers just like you. So we so appreciate that. Reach out anytime. You know, we're always inviting um, amazing retailers into our retailers inner circle. We would love for you to join us there. If you're not already a member, I know tons of our members already listen. So thank you for being a member. If you're listening and listening to me rattle on on the podcast, I so appreciate you. And uh, we'd love to have you inside the inner circle so we can continue the conversation over there in the inner circle. So join us there or reach out anytime and you can find, of course, information on my website at wendybatten.com. I'd love to be able to support you and your beautiful business. We'll see you next week. We have a brand new episode again for you next Monday. Have a fantastic week, my friends. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.